What's going on everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic coming to you with the PGA First Look Edition Players Championship Edition. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video, goes a long way for you. Then I could keep doing this video. That would be great for everybody involved. I love to talk golf. I hate to talk last week because I sucked. Uh, Arnold Palmer was not a good tournament for me in DFS, in betting, in anything. It was awful. So I'm here to redeem myself. Arnold Palmer, I tend to never get right. It's like Tyrrell Hatton wins all the time. I'm actually on Tyrrell Hatton this week at TBC Sawgrass. I think a lot of people are going to be, but looking forward to giving you the goods. But check out prize picks first. This is the best spot you can possibly help with this channel just because I want you guys to play over there. Use promo code Lindy, L-I-N-D-Y. When you sign up, click in the video description box below. Use promo code Lindy. Get up to $100 first match deposit bonus. They've got some great stuff going on over here. Now, we got to wait for the tee times to still come out, but I mean, fairways hit. If it's starting to look windy, it doesn't look so bad right now. Holes played. Yeah, they're basically saying, does Seb Straka make a cut? Now, it's harder to make a cut here than what it was last week. You have a larger field. Math, hashtag math. But so many great ways that you can go about playing over at uh, prize picks. I was looking at a couple of these specifically. We have Rory McIlroy against Rory McIlroy. That's a little strange. They're going to have some other ones coming up here very, very shortly. But yeah, that's strokes. There you go. Birdies are better. That's what I was trying to click on before. Uh, see how many of they have. The, the matchup of birdies are better. Rory versus Cam Young. Interesting stuff. Xander versus Tom Hoagie. Come on. We got to go Xander there. Lots of interesting first round matchups. Max Homa against Sam Burns. Come on now. Bermuda Burns is what it is. It's sad. It's sad to think that that's where we fall into. But use promo code Lindy. Yes, L-I-N-D-Y. Get yourself $100 first match deposit bonus. All righty, y'all. We're heading to the Top Golfers Teal. And this is going to be a very data-centric show for you. I want to help the people learn how to use Fantasy Cruncher better to make better PGA lineups. And part of that is being able to take the tools we have here at Stochastic, being able to incorporate them directly on the Fantasy Cruncher stream. And somebody hit me up last week, Eric, I don't know how to upload that data. Well, made my life a lot easier because I knew what I wanted to talk about here. To set the table for you, we're going to the Players' Championship that's played at TPC Sawgrass, a Pete Dye golf course, very similar to like Heritage, which is also a Pete Dye golf course. You have some similarities. Now, this has a lot more difficulty lur lurking around the corners. Uh, this is basically the creme de la creme of the Pete Dye golf course. Is this whistling straights also up there as well. But um, I look at everything here at Sawgrass. If you have great course history, I, I factor course history a little bit more this week than I do other weeks just because seeing this place is definitely going to cut down on the variance. It is a very high variance golf course. What does that mean? There's water damn near everywhere. Uh, it's lurking everywhere. You're not super driver heavy. It's still going to be pretty driver heavy because you're playing in March as opposed to uh, May when it had been played for a little bit there. They got back to the March schedule. I like it more. The golf course looks better. It's not playing firm and fast in a lot of the same type ways, but I think that also makes it play a tiny bit longer because you're going to be hitting a couple more drivers. You don't run out of, what, you know, you're just hitting like Stinger, two irons, Tiger style, uh, making your life a little bit easier. But I look at this golf course as, as a really interesting, challenging week because there's so much that can happen and the chalk can be especially, especially subject to brutality. And I think you see that in the optimal percentage right off the bat. Rory McIlroy, our most optimal player on the week here at Stochastic. 19.3% optimal percentage. You have 16.9% optimal percentage for John Rahm, but part of that is he's 11.8. He's 11.8. I think this is definitely going to trim down on that ownership, as will his weekend performance at the API. People always like to see what they just saw. Like, if John Rahm had kept that going and he had won, you'd be looking at 30% ownership, 25% ownership at John Rahm, even at 11.8, because it's like, oh, I'll start my builds with the winner and move on, even though that's not how golf works. And John Rum, he brought the people back down, but maybe he pulled the ownership down enough where I should be interested in John Rum still gaining in just about every single department. He got obliterated off the tee last week, lost over six shots off the tee. That is not very John Rom like I don't think that's going to be a trend that we have to be thinking is going to continue. So uh, I'm not going to overreact to one week. I don't think you should overreact to one week either. For better or for worse. I mean, obviously it was just for worse in that spot. But the rest of the top of the board is pretty fascinating because Cantlay coming in with an optimal percentage. And I think this has more to do with salary that he's jumping over Scheffler than it does just straight out ability. Because if you look at 
ceiling. I think, I mean, ceiling, you're going to have more with Scheffler just ever so slightly. He's won more in the last however many years. But we're seeing Canley and Scheffler really pull the ownership as a result of Rory being more expensive, Rom being more expensive. We'll talk about it in the single build that I do at the very end of this program, but it's going to definitely be a fascinating build amongst these top players. We're going to see how this, this ownership shakes out, but we're going to incorporate some of the, the, the data as we go to the Fantasy Cruncher section of this program. But let's keep making our way downtown, walking fast, faces passing them homebound. Tom Kim. Look at this ownership. One of the most negatively leveraged players here on the, the week. Jason Day makes sense. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to... It's going to be hard for me to get away from Day, but Kim at 8,100. He's had a pretty interesting beginning of his season. I don't think uh, anybody... I mean, he's won twice. Uh, he won twice last season. That's really what got him uh, on the map here, but he had been gaining so much with the putter. We're talking a crazy amount with the putter in both of those wins. Do I feel like investing in a chalky Tom Kim in this kind of a spot, knowing the high variance type golf course that we're about to be playing? He's lost with the putter the last two weeks. He's been pretty decent with the irons most of this year, sixth at the American Express, but once the fields got bigger, I was very curious to see what would happen to him. And I think what I expected to have happen, exactly what happened with him. 50th at the Waste Management, 45th at the Genesis, 34th at the Arnold Palmer. If you told me he got 34th at this tournament, I wouldn't want him at 8,100. I don't think you should want him when you're trying to finish first in a GPP. So I'm going to take my chances. I think Tom Kim, sick as it is. Oh, sorry, that was uh, prize picks. I'll just X out of that. Um, as sick as it is to say, 8,100 Tom Kim with this kind of negative leverage, optimal percentage is this low. I got to get away from it. I'm far more inclined to eat the chalk with Jason Day, Keegan Bradley, Ricky Fowler, my dude. Ricky Fowler. I understand his optimal percentage even lower than Tom Kim's, but former winner here, long, long time ago in a galaxy far away. But still, former winner, plays well in Florida, decent on the surface of Bermuda surfaces. Uh, everything's starting to come back with the golf game. I think Tom Kim's going to just, as a result, be the guy who ends up getting trimmed in my specific builds because of that ownership. So we're looking at the most negatively leveraged players. There's some landmines, I think, scattered down here. Nothing crazy. I mean, Corey Connors, of course, he can still spike it with the ball striking. Will Zalatoris, I think, is a very interesting conversation piece. 15.3% ownership, 10.9% optimal percentage. He falls into that category of 35 to 1 guys that I think are better bets necessarily than like straight out great DFS plays. But, you know, if he wins, you're going to want to hit DFS. You're going to need him in DFS in that kind of a regard. I'm not sure what to make with some of his specific starts. Uh, he's going through some swing changes, but he had phenomenal ball striking at the Genesis. Spiked fourth there, uh, put up a fourth at Genesis. Didn't show all that much last week, but like, it's one week. I'm not going to overreact to that kind of a stuff. Getting familiar back on the Bermuda surfaces. The putter disappeared for the first time since August last year. I think that's one piece that I think even in single entry, I might highlight as a player there maybe... Not as high in the 150 builds. Just kind of depends on how you want to go about using your using your player allotments. Like if you're building out 150 in the mini max, you're playing in the three dollar. Does he end up being somebody that you want to be overweight to, or do you want to kind of get yourself more? You know, because 8800, I thought he was going to be more popular. Finau ended up a little bit uh, just about as popular. Has a higher optimal percentage. That's a little bit surprising to me. Again, Will Zalatoris. Just somebody that I'm, I'm having a tough time figuring out what to do. Let me know in the comment section below if you like him. Let me know that. But we're going to finish it out with the positively leveraged players. As I said, we're going to be much more data-centric here as we go to the uh, optimal lineups. When we're talking on Fantasy Cruncher, I'm going to show you how to take this data directly from here to uh, Fantasy Cruncher. But you got John Rahm, the most positively leveraged golfer. That would just be awesome, but maybe it doesn't hold... The salary is what makes it difficult. I think he's probably not going to make my single entry builds just because of that more than anything else. Uh, I feel like the security, you don't have to be perfect in some 1,500, 2,000 single entry uh, entrance kind of tournament. And I feel more inclined to get away from Rom there. Probably be overweight to him in large field. Kind of my game plan at the moment. Brandon Wu, 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 Brandon Wu sitting there. And then Xander Shoffley. I'm also very surprised to see him with positive leverage. This has been a darling, an absolute darling of the DFS golf community. But 10K, they really jacked up that salary over on DraftKings. Shout out to them for that because 
Again, I like it when it's a little bit more cost prohibitive. You can't just get to those guys. And then the form hasn't been what you would want out of Xander at this kind of a number. But he shot 75-76 over the weekend. The weekend was playing much more difficult at the API. Shot 68-70, put himself in the mix early on in that tournament, and faded big time on the weekend. But yeah, he was 6-under going into that weekend. 6-under looked pretty good if he just played even over the weekend. But the Genesis is whatever. Nothing really stood out there. Waste Management, Phoenix Open, Farmers. Everything looks all right for him. Again, give me... Oh, I was over on DK looking at the, the box score showing you guys that stuff. But Xander Shoffley, again, that. 75, 76. We're going to live. We're going to live and we're not going to... Well, we're not going to go to live tour. That's terrible stuff. Can't even talk about it. And then I'll talk about some cheapies once we get to the single entry builds. But you can see almost always the positive leverage department it's the uncomfortable clicks over here. So you have on the top end, Rom, Shoffley, and then this mid-range where it's a little bit more concentrated and people like to land because, again, the lineup security and single entry. I am going to be peppering some of these mid-range plays, but as you can see, almost always going to be a lot of negative leverage when you get 7,500 to 9K. It's just how much uncertainty do you want to be taking on a week-by-week -week basis. All right, y'all. Hello, Fantasy Cruncher. How are you this fine day? Good to see you. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Just got the tea times here, too. That's lovely. Let's plug those in. Great stuff. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you how to take this data. It's super easy. But I think it's very important that you understand how to utilize this leverage because this leverage is going to change between now and tomorrow. I always group it by salary just for you know, continuity's sake. I don't think it really matters what you do, but I do it for the boom bust tool. When I'm playing uh, NBA DFS, when I'm playing PGA DFS, I like to go over here and I will take the CSV, okay? See how it goes in this bottom left corner. We simply click over here to Fantasy Cruncher and I'm gonna go to the upload data tab. Look at this, oh, I had done it before. We're gonna clear all rows, clear all rows. There you go. As if I hadn't been practicing this before showing you guys, but we simply have to take this and we can copy and paste it here, like so. Look at this. We have all of the files. We simply had to drag the CSV and put it in here. Now, I've done it a couple times because I was trying to make sure that I could seamlessly show you how to do this. We can go to the skip all tab. And then I like to keep the name, median, anything that's just sitting there that, that gives me some kind of salary like that already exists there, but you know, whatever, you can do whatever you want, just leave it there. The whole key is looking at these pieces of data, the stuff that comes directly off of Stochastic. I think the most important we can talk about now is like optimal percentage leverage. I'm going to skip these other ones just so that it's not cluttering your entire feed. Top six percentage, not the worst thing to keep there. Let's draw. We can keep the floor, ceiling. I'll keep the ceiling tab out there. Sorry, I had to cough. Uh, ceiling tab, I'm going to keep out just because I think that that's kind of an interesting one to look at. I'll keep name. Uh, yeah. Standard deviation, we don't need that. So I'm keeping the optimal percentage and leverage. That's the most important thing. So we're going to add the da data to the table, like so. Oop. It's going. Come on now. Let me jump out of this thing. Come on now. Zoom out. There we go. All right, so it uploaded everything there. Uh, I want to clear this one more time because it didn't have the players' names. I want to add that. So we're going to go here. We're going to go CSV. This is how quick it can be when you're not doing a show of it. We're just going to add it all. I'm just going to add all the data to the table for now. Takes a second to get going. We can go do 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 do. My name do 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 do. My do 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 do. I promise it's going. I clicked add data to table. There it goes. All right. So we're going to upload these projections. See how it takes everything: leverage, optimal, ceiling, everything down the line. I'm going to upload those projections. It's processing. Look at it go. Go, little sheep. You're doing great. You're doing a great job. How's everybody doing? Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. A lot of data. A lot of things are showing up. But I uploaded the projections. I uploaded everything there. And oh, look at it. It's so beautiful. Here it is directly in your own tab. Yeah, look at that. My data section. It's so beautiful. We have everything that we can group it off of. I have leverage. We can take the most positively leveraged players and they come right to the top of the table. We are basically turning this into this on Fantasy Cruncher. And if I want to go into the advanced options and I want to group it based off of something, 
I can do it on my own list. I can add these sections in over here. So again, I have an opportunity to like move them around, do whatever I want with the floor. I could basically make a grouping on positive leverage. Again, click on it there and you can take all of your pieces and you can make groups based on the positively leveraged players. <gasps> what a concept. I could use a little fuel myself and we could all use a little change. That's for sure. Hit that like button as we move over everybody. That is how you upload data over at Fantasy Cruncher along with Stochastic. You can sign up for that package together down in the video description box below. Cool, let's talk single entry. Last thing to do, we're gonna build it out. This is actually going very, very quickly. I feel good about this, but again, I want you to learn how to make better lineups. I don't wanna necessarily tell you every single characteristic about the golf course. I could go on and on as a real golfer, as somebody who loves golf about Bermuda surfaces and how the, the grinds on your wedges matter in terms of like when you're trying to find the perfect thing that's going to work on surface types. Florida, it's just so tough sometimes to get the right chipping around the green. So you wanna be familiar with the surfaces, the around the green game, that's stuff that matters. But you could also be Victor Hovland and hit like every single green, that's always good too. But I see some viability in skipping the 10K range when it comes to single entry. I don't know how many times you're going to want to skip out on Rom, McElroy, Scheffler, and Chavley when it comes to building out more than two, three lineups. But I think for single entry, I have a pretty intriguing notion that we could get Sung JM as somebody who you could start your builds with and you could really stack this up. Now, Sung J doesn't have the craziest uh, form here of late the last three weeks. It's just been fading on the weekend, fading on the week. Well, just kind of flatline on the weekend. But no matter what, Sung JM in Florida, and then in some of these elite fields, we saw T4 at the Farmers, T6 at the Phoenix on Bermuda. Just saying, this is a dude that I think makes some sense to be invested in. I also want to X out of this. I don't know why that keeps showing up. There it went. Whatever. Keep going. Uh, I am looking at that. Uh, it's really good stuff. Sung JM, 9K. Makes all the sense in all the land. Victor Hovland, I just kind of talked about him a second ago. But I, I kind of like clicking on him too. Again, I think my single entry builds are going to be fitting in this 9K, 8K. I've got my lineups reserved. I'm ready to rock. But uh, I feel pretty good about getting Sung J, Victor Hovland. I don't know what to make of that, that final round. I mean, that 75, that could have easily been a lot better. He showed up. He showed up in... Uh, I mean, he just played really, really good and then hit it in the water and was kind of fading out uh, towards the end there. But some interesting characteristics about Victor Hovland, if I'm going to be pairing him there. We know how bad that around the green game has been, but he's had some su success at like resort courses. Uh, you know, he, going back to like uh, victories at Mayakoba uh, back in 2021. <laughs> now I'll live to her. The OHL uh, finished first there as well. You had the first at the Puerto Rico Open. Some of these like resort tile style golf courses. Pete Dye kind of builds his golf courses that way. Not the biggest Pete Dye fan, but it's tricky. It's it's still like that Bermuda grass type. It's kind of interesting. I find Victor Hovland, I was kind of completely off of him last week. Again, I got obliterated. I don't think it's very chasey to go that direction. Plus, talked about it earlier. I think Victor Hovland, 8,900 here. Yeah, he's negative leverage, but when I'm building out single entry, I have a lot of paths to get different. And I think one of that is just avoiding this entire nine and 10k range you know clicking on sung jay just clicking on him at 9k pretty flat leverage but either way i like this kind of a start and that isn't something that i'm going to generally be doing quite a bit uh over the course of my career uh, cameron you know just completely obliterated me last week but matthew fitzpatrick is my next click 8600 i am definitely definitely playing him in single entry this week kind of mirrors a lot of the characteristics we saw from cam uh, I can't even talk about Cam Smith. He's gone. He's left us. Former winner Cam Smith here at the Players' Championship. I feel like it's a pretty good click on Matt Fitzpatrick. I know Ben Rosser wrote him up as a one-and-done possibility. I think I might have to be taking shots like that. I am way behind in one-and-done right now. You probably are if you didn't just completely nuke the first couple of alternate events, or not alternate events, elevated events. That's the word I'm going for, but... Matt Fitzpatrick, I think, is just a, a solid all-around player who also fits the characteristics I want to be building with uh, this week. So Matt Fitzpatrick definitely showing up for me. I then see Shane Lowry, Tyrrell Hatton. I think this is a pretty target-rich environment. We're seeing a lot of them pop. There's not negative leverage, but I want to talk about Maverick McNeely because this is, this is like my gut play of the week. 
and I don't want to like pick players, but like there's no way in God's green earth that when we go over to the boom bust tool or to the uh, top golfers tool and you put in Maverick, that you are not going to be getting positive leverage on Maverick McNeely. Look at this. 5% optimal percentage, 3.4% leverage. But here's my case for him. He's been hurt. He's had a shoulder issue for the last however long. And uh, yeah, he had to withdraw out of his last two tournaments. He played in the AT&T Pebble Beach. He played in Phoenix and he had to withdraw from both of them. I think that we're looking, if he's going to be healthy, he was playing awesome going back to the fall season. T10, T12, T18, T10, T27. Get it. Some weaker fields, some decent fields here in the middle of it too. Zozo, CJ, cool, looks great. If you're getting him on a week where he's healthy, 7,800 is such an overpay for him that it's not even funny based on you know what we've seen out of him. Oh, I received DK dollars, that's nice. Um, I am looking at Maverick McNeely, 7,800. Nobody is gonna click on him. Everybody's gonna click on, and I mean, Burns is my dude, so I mean, we could just maybe click him in as well, but everybody's gonna click on Jason Day. Everybody's gonna click on Tom Kim. Everybody's gonna click on Thigala. Everybody's gonna click on Si Wu as a great course history. I like Maverick as the one percenter. He might be the one person that I take some kind of a path, like a strong, strong stance with. You know, even like 10% in large field gets you 10x the field. But I might be playing even more of that. He's been at this golf course for the last week. On the PGA Tour, you're traveling course to course. You're running around. You're doing your own stuff. He basically said, I'm going to go hang out at the players. Maybe he's still there. And this just torches me and whatever else but it's a high variance golf course and it's hard to find upside at one percent but 7800 he's overpriced over he's going to be completely ignored so i can play as much chalk as i want and i click on maverick mcneely and there's a case to be made where he could jump up t20 and i am golden avoiding the rest of the range now would i need him to probably t10 yeah but i bet him at t20 it's plus 1400 for those who care lots of opportunities to be able to capitalize on some of those w so that is the other click that i've got there and i can go to anybody else that i want here i'm gonna just click on my dude sam burns it's looked awful it's terrible but it's bermuda we saw some form again the, the phoenix open look great that uh, looks great that's bermuda this is bermuda too and he was freaking terrible in every single facet but Happy to fire up a little bit of him. 7,900. Dealer's choice, wherever you want there. You could also go to Hatton. I completely, completely understand that. Lots of players down here, but I'm probably not going below 7K, and I'm probably not going above 9K in my single entry build for this week. So that does it for the PGA First Look Show. That is kind of my thinking for it. We're targeting all-around golfers. We're targeting people who have actually played this golf course a couple of times. That's helpful. I really do like Will Zalatoris for tournaments too, even though he's not making my single entry build right now. It's so sad. But guys, hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell as we get out of here. I have nothing further to say. I'll be back next week per usual. Best of luck. Don't forget to check out PGA DFS. Oh, we've got the, uh, what is it? Live Before Lock. That is Jeff Ulrich and my dude, Ben Raza. Check them out Wednesday night. They'll be giving you guys the updated tools, content. Sign up for it all below in the video description box below. And prize picks. Use promo code Lindy. Get $100 for a smash deposit bonus. Until next week, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the PGA DFS streets at Players Championship. Go Sawgrass. <laughs>